one of my last major uh, assignments was to do the identification of the victims from 9-11. Seeing people who had been killed in terrible, terrible ways gave me the feeling that there were real evil in the world. No human being could be this evil just by themselves. I was born and raised in the Bronx in New York City. Uh, like any other good Jewish boy, I would go to Hebrew school. We were leaving school at three o'clock and we just happened to run into these Catholic schoolgirls. They just started berating us, calling us names and, and punching some of the other boys. And they were calling us Christ killers. The only Christians I imagined were Catholics. I knew the Catholics knew the New Testament. That was their, their Bible. And uh, I just felt that this was a very anti-Semitic uh, book, that this had nothing to do with Judaism. If anything, it had to do with beating up the Jews or getting the Jews. That was my understanding as, I, as, a, as a young child growing up in the Bronx. I studied uh, dentistry at NYU after graduating. I became associated with the office of the chief medical examiner in New York City, and I learned about forensic medicine and forensic dentistry. I had four shields as the chief dental consultant for the city of New York, which is a very, very high uh, chief of detective shields. The tragedy of 9-11 reminded me of what it was to work in the medical examiner's office. The real personification of evil existed in that office. It was terrible, but I knew the corollary was true, that there was this good part that would be opposing evil, and that, of course, is God. One day, of all things, I have a patient, and she was so sweet and so nice, we just hit it off right away. Maybe we should get married and have a nice religious ceremony. And my wife had been brought up Catholic. I was at a loss at who was going to perform the ceremony. And my friend said, there's this church on the Upper West Side, and the associate rector is named Steve Pogoloff. Hmm. Steve Pogoloff, that doesn't sound like a very Episcopalian name. Obviously, Pogoloff was also Jewish. One day in the church, they announced that there was going to be a series, an evening series, of the Jewish perspective of Jesus given by a Jewish person who believes in Jesus. It was so intriguing, the title and what he was going to speak about, that we said, i really like to go and, and listen to him, and I did. So I went that first night, and the guest lecturer for the, that night, for the next two uh, weeks, was Bob Mendelson. I said, you mean to tell me, Bob, uh, since I'm a Jew, and uh, I'm, I think I, I'm a pretty good Jew, I, I don't even cheat on my income taxes, and I can say that with a straight face, and I could do all these things, you're telling me that unless I believe in this person, Jesus, that I will not go to heaven, yep, you're not going to go. You have to believe there's only one way, and that way is through Jesus Christ. I mean, what chutzpah, what, what nerve to say that to somebody and to believe that? It's just unbelievable. Well, when I first started reading the New Testament uh, with the expectation that I was going to be reading this real anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish book, it was just the opposite. I said, how can anybody say this is an anti-Semitic book? It's a very, very Jewish book. All the apostles, who I thought were Catholic, obviously they were not, were all Jewish boys. They were just like me. I was shocked. The scripture only points to one man, and it points to Jesus. I said, this, this resurrection is true. With all the archaeology and all the technology and everything that we have, Nobody's ever come forward with, with any evidence that there was a body and the body was found. Very, very, very difficult to get rid of a body. Well, if the resurrection is true, well, then everything he said has to be true. I couldn't get away from that fact that, therefore, this indeed was the Messiah that had been promised and is promised to the Jews. And uh, I believed it, and I believed he was the Messiah, and I led him into my life, and I let him lead me, and I try to, as best I can, as a human being, to follow him. It's, it's always a struggle, but I try to do what I know that Christ would want me to do and what I should be doing. Many people don't like the truth, and they want to keep the status quo that they know and prevent the truth from coming in and disrupting their, their way of life. 
There's no question that there's a there was a change in me. I did have a tendency to curse and, and get angry. I, my children are 26 years old, and they never heard me curse. Never heard me curse. Jesus is, is my Lord and my Messiah.